What's going on, nieces and nephews? Uncle Dave here. Welcome back to Confessions of a Handyman. Today, we're going to take a look at uh, another handyman video. Uh, this time, the handyman again, but from his uh, channel, the handyman business. It's going to be linked down below to this channel as well. Uh, and in this video, he talks about how I make $1,000 a day working on investment properties. So the last video that we looked at is his video on the actual physical work. And then this channel is dedicated to his business end of it, meaning his theories, his perspective about how to run a successful handyman business. Okay, so let's go ahead and, and jump right into it. So, All right. Welcome back to the Handyman Business YouTube channel. Today, we're going to discuss my experience with property managers and investment properties and how they pay so well. I'm going to go into detail. I, I had to bust out the big dry erase board. I got to simplify things because there are so many questions uh, from people who are commenting. I mean, there's like 800 comments on that one video. Uh, questions and questions. How is this possible? Who are the, who owns these houses? And why aren't they there putting in their smoke detectors? You're going to see that your bread and butter are people who can't do the stuff for themselves. And that's not the type of customer that you want. Why would you want a customer who can install stuff for themselves or wants to do it? You want the customers who do not want to do the work themselves, whether they live in the property or not. So I'm going to break it down, the hierarchy, who the people are that own the houses, who the people are that manage the houses, and who's the guy that fixes the problems? So you notice three levels. Who owns it, who manages, and who fixes it. When you're talking about investment properties and how to grow a handyman business, you do want to get into working for either investors or property managers who handle all the property maintenance and all the property management for those properties because that's consistent work. The way that they structure their setup in their business is buy it, fix it, rent it, you manage it, have the other dude make the repairs. So this is what we're going to get into. Here is the diagram. Sit down here. Oh, no, not sit. Up top here, we have investors. They're called eyes. Got eyes on them. This one here represents a, a 10 millionaire. He owns three houses. And I'm going to get to how they buy their houses. Should I do it in this video or not? Well, we'll see where this goes. That might be a different video because now that's investing on their perspective. So that may be another video. But that'd be an interesting video too. So they got three houses, rental properties. We've got this big investor group, lots of eyes. They own lots of houses, many different types of houses. Con Typically RITs, real estate investment trusts is when you have major investors. So that's literally hundreds and hundreds of people investing into this RIT, Real Estate Investment Trust. So they all put their money into there. And then whoever's running it, usually there's people that are running it and then the investors underneath them. They're the ones that take that money, make the decisions on investing, or what properties to buy, what properties to sell, what are they going to be used for? Those lofts, single families. And then we have the small time investor who only has one rental house. That's not your bread and butter. None of these people want to take care of that house. They're investors. They're not uh, DIYers. They're not someone who, like me, uh, had a house that they lived in and they, they moved out into a new house and they decided to keep their old house as a rental. That's not, not this situation here. These are all investors that have lots of money. We're talking 10 million, we're talking 100 million, and we're talking maybe a three millionaire over here. They don't even buy the houses a lot of times. A lot of times they don't even see the houses. There are realtors that specialize in acquiring houses for these investors. Okay, so if you think about how that works, so these people have the money to invest. And it's true, most of the time, they don't even see the properties. They've never seen them, pictures maybe. Um, and they don't care to see them. They have people that go out there, they scout, they scout properties for them. They make suggestions, they make um, investment proposals that are presented to the customer. And they say, hey, this is the area, right? This is the school system in the area, the ratings. Uh, these are the the stores etc cetera, etc cetera. it's located very well whatever the case is and then they make the decision 
and they either invest or they don't on those given properties. But he's completely right. Most of these people have never seen those properties and they don't want to see them. Why? Because they don't live there. Now, if you think about this, though, and I think we're going to touch into this, but you start start thinking ahead a little bit here, right? If an investor has never seen the property and they're dealing with, let's call it a middleman at this point, which is a real estate agent who finds him those properties and they give him the money to invest in those properties, trust is a very big deal, okay? All of these relationships are set up with trust, meaning I am trusting the people that I am working with that they have the same perspective and the same end goal, which is to make money. That's it. Let's make money together. How can I help you and how can you help me make money? Because it is a business based on trust. You as a handyman have to be the person that they can trust to repair their properties. All right. We'll talk about that. And the small time investor, even though I'm saying it's not your bread and butter, they can become your bread and butter if they continue to invest in properties and you make it less of a headache for them. You can see the houses. The realtors buy the houses. These guys will pay for the houses. Um, a video that I just filmed for the Handyman main channel uh, is one of these situations. He, the father, is probably in this category a 10, probably a 10 to 20 millionaire, and he bought all his kids' houses, their first house. Is it really their house? No, it's, an, it's a family investment. The owners of these houses never even seen them. They don't want to see them. They just want the money. They hire. It's an investment. What is my return? I don't need to see it. What is my return? Is it going to make me money? Yeah, then let's do it. A property management company, the P, the PM, is usually referred through the realtor. So the property manager and the realtor that do these investment properties are in cahoots together. That's not a bad thing. It's just business. It's networking. That's all it is. You're building a team of people that you work with. And as a handyman, you're part of that team as well. And you need to think of yourself as part of that team. Because if you think of yourself as part of that team, that means that you have a vested interest in that team's success because that ultimately makes you money as well. All these houses need routine maintenance they need smoke detectors they need light bulbs changed they need yeah light bulbs changed light bulbs this filters changed they need the garbage disposal change they need you guys know the drill you've seen all the videos they don't nickel and dime the handyman comes along they don't nickel and dime sometimes uh what they may do is not not once they've been working with you and they trust you, but in the beginning when you're first, okay, so when you first approach her and you're starting to work with a real estate agent or a property manager, usually the way that it functions is you come into into the scenario, they contact you either through a referral, usually for me it's a referral, whatever the situation is, they say to me, hey Dave, so I used to have a guy, it always functions, it always goes this way, I used to have a guy, but A, B, C, and D happened, and now I'm looking for somebody else. So right now, I'm getting multiple bids on the work. So I'm getting multiple estimates, usually about three that I have to submit to the homeowner that they will have to approve. I like the way that you, you talk and, you know, I get a good vibe from you. So I'm going to recommend them. Um, and they, they, they'll actually usually be pretty upfront with you if you're giving the estimate at that point, or they may say to you, you know, as far as pricing and stuff is concerned, you usually have a conversation about ranges, not really a dollar amount, meaning can we work on pricing if it becomes down to a price difference that's not too big and I would rather work with you and recommend you, is that a conversation we can have? And absolutely, yeah, we can have that conversation. Because you have to understand that yeah, you have your rates and everything, but at the beginning of a relationship, it's a, it's a give and take. So <clears throat> if they don't have that conversation with you, I would recommend that you have that conversation with them. At the moment that you're given the estimate or that you're at the property looking at whatever the case is, sometimes the real estate agent doesn't even go there. Most of the time, I just get a, a, a gate code. If it's at the point of purchase or sale, 
I just get a, a gate code, I get a lockbox code, and I go in there. But make sure you have that conversation, either that they bring the conversation forward or you have it. Listen, if it comes down to either me or somebody else and you would rather work with me, I put that in their head already, if you rather work with me and it comes down to just, you know, a negotiation, a fair negotiation on price, we can have that conversation. Because now you're putting yourself in, the, in their forefront. I'm willing to help you make money so that I can make money as well. Once you establish the relationship and they trust you, your rates are your rates. They don't want to look for somebody else. They know that you're reliable. They know that you're the guy that's going to get the stuff done. He discovers this property management company through a Craigslist ad searching for a drywall repair specialist. Keep in mind this was uh, they were managing an actual commercial building and it was a roof leak. I just did some drywall repair in an office. High value for the money I gave this property manager. High value for the money. High value for the money. That's what I just said, right? Talk, talk to them. Make it, make it clear that you are willing to play ball. Get in, then establish your rates and don't go back on that. All right? Craigslist is a way of getting work as well. If ever times are slow, look, look in there. The ones that are by homeowners, usually they'll say, I'm looking for somebody who's affordable, who's fair, who's blah, blah, blah. And you'll know. Then there's other people who are looking. I need somebody that needs that can come out here. I have a property that needs this. When they say, I have a property instead of my home, that usually means it's either an investor or property manager or real estate agent handling the transaction of the repair. And that's your gate. That's your gateway in. He says, okay, well, you did great. I got some houses that uh, I could use your help on. I said, okay, sure. That they are making a ton, ton of money off of me and everything that I can do. They are now the acting general contractor for some remodels on these houses. Remodels and updates. So let's see if he touches this. I don't know if he will, but he said that they, the property managers, make money off of me, him, the handyman. Why? Okay, we'll get back to that. If, if, he, if he doesn't touch on that, then I'll touch on that. Why? Because these investors need to put money somewhere. And certain times, it's not good to put it in the stock market. Like right now, the stock market is, is pretty high, very high. And we could be on some sort of inflated bubble. Where can we put this money? We can, we've got other places. We can invest. We can increase the value. We can increase the rentability. We can increase the square footage. Real estate is a safe haven for money sometimes. <clears throat> Even the, if the house is not technically purchased for investment, meaning a rental property, it could be as a safe haven to safeguard money um for tax purposes or whatever the case is right and yeah that that does go up in value um etc cetera, etc cetera. so those are good points right of these investments down here to get more money if and when we decide to sell when we rent them out they can rent for you know a premium Come. plus the equity that you're making on the property the value the increase in value from the time that you purchased to the time that you sold it that's also big picture thinking, meaning I made X per month for X months when I rented the property. Now that I'm going to sell it, I purchased it for X. Now the property has gone up another amount. I'm making that on top of what I made monthly. Yep. And they say, hey, we want to do an addition on this house. We want to finish the basement on this house. Uh, this house here, we want the entire thing painted. We want all the light fixtures changed. We want new flooring in the kitchen. We want new cabinets. The list goes on and on. That's above and beyond just maintaining all these. Keep in mind, this is just a diagram here. There could be 50, 100. I don't even know how many houses. A lot of times they, they send me a text message and say, we need you to go to so-and-so house. I'm like, I'm going to need the full address. I don't know. I can't remember that. I don't think I've ever been there. They, they have a lot of addresses. They won't ever tell you how many properties they actually have. Um, you may dealing with a property manager, you may get to know investor names, meaning the owner's name. So you'll hear a, a Laura or you are hear a Jeff or, or, or whatever. Hey, I need you to go to one of John's properties, the one at whatever. And I'm like, um, I don't think I've been there. Right. Because 
they're not going to tell you, hey, this guy, when they hire you, they're going to say, this guy has 50 properties. Those conversations like that don't happen. I have a need. Can you do it? New houses coming in all the time. Okay, how about the money, the money thing? Oh, this house here needs a garbage disposal replaced. I've talked about this in previous videos. It's not a garbage disposal. This investment has an issue. We need that issue to go away so that this investment can continue to make money and doesn't go down in value. Go take care of this problem with this investment. $250 is nothing. Most all of these are in the 400,000 to 650. A few are getting into the 800,000. There's one duplex that I know that both units would be 800,000. Okay, so <clears throat> those are higher value homes. So th those are typically different types of invest inve in, uh, investments, meaning if you are buying and investing strictly for uh, passive income from a monthly rent, you don't buy that high as far as price of home because now you're talking about high-end rentals. And all those, although those make money, the difference between how much you can charge and versus and how much you make in profit versus your initial investment is lower because it's a limited return on investment okay and also the high-end clients from the homeowner's perspective and from so meaning the investor perspective and the property manager perspective tend to be more of a pain in the butt because they're paying more that means they demand more they demand quicker action to get things fixed but also those higher end dollar homes are usually bought as an investment for equity, meaning they got the house at a really great price and they're expecting it to sometimes 50% or double their investment within a few years and then sell it. That's typically how it works for higher end homes. Okay. As a general rule, um, most of the time that does apply. So 250 bucks for a garbage disposal, it's so insignificant. Again, remember, all of these are renting from twenty-five to thirty-two thousand dollars a year. Five hundred bucks, nothing. It's nothing. It's nothing. It is nothing. I mean, look how much you're standing to gain. The other thing that you have to realize when you send the bill to these property managers, and the property manager send, send, uh, pays it, and then sends the paid invoice over to the investor or the homeowner, they don't look at it as wasting or spending money. They look at it as this was an investment. This was cost of doing business. That's a write-off for them. To these people, they don't even know that, that it's a garbage disposal. They don't care. They don't want to know that a smoke detector got pulled off the ceiling because it was beeping. The only time that the 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 homeowner, right, or the property manager, let's just call them. I'm sorry, the the investor. Let's just call them the homeowner because although they're, they're investors, they own the property that you're working on. They don't really get notified of a garbage disposal. They usually get called when it's like, hey, we had a leak uh, and we had to get somebody out there uh, uh, as an emergency. And now it's going to be drywall repair and plumbing and painting and flooring. Now you're talking about a, a major bill. That's when the homeowner gets tapped. And even then, guys, that is an expense for them. You write that stuff off. And the tenant just went down plucking them with their little gopher grabber thing. Hope this explains some things. How do you find a property management company? I got lucky. I didn't have to do much legwork other than respond to a couple Craigslist ads. It did spread. The PM had some commercial properties. Uh, the owners of the businesses that worked out of these commercial properties were like, hey, this guy's, you know, um, there's a whole psychological game that I would play. It's the business game, the corporate game. Look different, talk different than the competition. Talk different, look different, act different, right? Run your business different. Be reliable. Always answer your phone when they call. Do what you said you were going to do. Be there the day and time that you said you were going to be there. And most importantly, if something goes wrong, make it right. That's all you have to do. Similar to the handyman, I actually kind of, I fell into that as well. I actually met the property managers that I work with through Thumbtack. And then it was 
basically referrals from there because you have you have to think about it yeah they have they'll test you on one or two properties and then if they like you they'll start sending you to their other needs and if you're doing a repair for so you have to man it it, it is a snowball effect right there's so many things that get encompassed with that because you you can't limit yourself to just say i'm doing this repair for the property manager at this property well that person that's renting that property also becomes your customer so when I go and I'm doing a repair and I have never met the person who is renting, when I'm done, I give them my card and I let them know, hey, so the dishwasher is fixed now. I got the new one in there. I tested everything. Everything should be working perfectly. If there's an issue with this, with the dishwasher, you have, here's my card. Give me a call directly because I've already come out here to get this done. And then you can just call me and I'll make sure that I come back over here and I'll double back if I need to, if, if it's still not working properly or if something comes up. But if anything else comes up, make sure that you contact the property manager, right? It has to go through them. And also, you know, keep me in mind, if there's anything that doesn't fall within uh, repairs, if you need to put up a TV, uh, if you need any shelving in your closet, whatever the case is, if you want to put any light fixtures, feel free to give me a call. Boom, you're in as well. Because they already trust you because you're doing work for the owner of the house for that property manager. So now they become your client as well. If you're going to commercial properties that are rented as a business, they become your customers as well. Always do the same thing. You have to create your opportunities. If you're out there repairing something, don't be shy because other stuff is going to come up. So even if it's a business, say, hey, listen, uh, I changed the air filter, right? Whatever, whatever it is that they send you to do out there. If there's any an issue with that, here's my card. Since I already came out here for that, you can call me directly. Anything new that pops up, go through the property manager. But if you guys needed to do any uh, updating that's not covered here by the owner of the property manager, feel free to give me a call. I'll be happy to help you out. That's your customer now too. Competition who is working for 15 bucks an hour, 17 bucks an hour, it's easy to distinguish yourself from them. I hope that answered a lot of the questions because I could pretty much see the frustration through the comments because there were so many and a lot of them got very nasty and in, in disbelief that this system works. The system works. Not only does it work, but it is, it is how everything is done. It is how the investment world works, right? That, that is the status quo. That is the normal. If you have never worked or heard of anything that goes on within that world, yeah, it sounds strange to you because you think to yourself, well, I would never invest in something that I've never seen. That sounds foreign to us, but to them, it's normal. It's the way that everything works. That this system exists. Questions, put them down below. There's another topic I've got. It doesn't exist as big in small towns. That's true. Unless you're talking about maybe you're getting in with property managers that maybe handle strip malls. Um, but again, you have to build, you have to make your opportunities, make your opportunities wherever you can. Talk about, it's about the location and small town people and the, the availability of work. You got to be willing to, to move. Pretty much the only way to make good money, I don't want to say the only way, is going to a large city where the money is. If you're providing a service and you want to be making top dollar, you have to go where the money is. That'll be a topic for a different video. Thank you. Okay, so that, that uh, he was about to say thank you. So, okay. Do you have to move to a bigger town to make more money? Yes and no. Meaning, I always say whatever the going rate is in a given area, doesn't matter my price is not set based on that because i distinguish myself outside of the common normal um cliche of what a handyman is but you can't push your prices beyond a certain point and the only times that you can is if you've been there long enough and you've proven yourself to be the most reliable person then you can start charging a little bit outside of what would be the norm or the comfort the comfortable but you still can't i mean you can't charge in um in shreveport what you would charge in new york right the, it's different people make different money 
et cetera, et cetera. So I, I agree with it. And at the same time, there's a caveat as you can't set your prices based on what the going rate is because you should make yourself more valuable than that. All right, so let's double back then. A lot of good information here, but so let, he, he didn't touch on this. Um, and it wasn't exactly towards this topic, but he said that the property managers make money off of him as well. So why is that? So that's twofold. One, if you make everything easy on your property manager, that makes your property manager look good to the homeowner, which means that they will renew contract with them. Because just like us, if that property manager screws up, that investor, that homeowner is going to look for another property manager to make it easier on them. So you're making the money that way. Sometimes, especially when he, he said remodels, right? When he was referring to that, he also said remodel. So why, why does that matter? Why does that come to consideration? Typically, a remodel is not part of a property manager's contract. That is outside of the scope of that. That's a major renovation. That's not maintaining your home. That's not managing the day-to-day -day activities of it, meaning repairs, small repairs, and that kind of stuff. That is within the scope of a property manager. Okay, how else does a property ma manager make money off of you apart from making them look good so that they renew their contracts? When property managers, and I'm, I'm, property managers are probably not going to like me saying this, uh, and maybe even other handymen, but you know what? Confessions of a handyman. So here we go. If a property manager decides that they will handle remodels and renovations for their their properties that they're their owners, right? The properties that the properties that they are managing, although they don't get paid extra, and usually it's 10% of the monthly that they charge the tenant is what goes into the pocket of the property manager. When they decide to go outside of their scope to make it easier and build a better relationship and keep that relationship with that investor. They will say, sure, it's not typically something that I'll do, but I'll help you with that remodel. And they already have you in mind because you're responsible. They know that that's within your scope of work, etc. But then here's what happens. Sometimes the property manager will call me over and say, hey, Dave, so listen, um, I need to talk to you about John's property. Um, John has a property on XYZ. The tenant just moved out. They're going to put it back on the rental market, but they want to make some they want to make some renovations, maybe new kitchens, or cabinets, uh, bathroom remodel, whatever the case is. So I want you to go out there and I want you to give me a bid based on what it is that you charge me. So whatever it is that you always charge, charge that. But I want you to kind of take something into consideration now that we've been working together for X amount of time. But I'd like you to absolutely charge what it is that you were going to charge me for the you know that you're going to charge for that job what 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 your that job is worth for you can you go ahead and put an extra 10 percent so figure out what your cost is going to be for materials and your work and everything price that all out and on my end as the handyman that's also has to be factored into my cost because they are not going to go out and pick the tile and everything else, right? So now I have to go ahead and, and kind of start choosing the design and the look of everything based on what I think the property calls for. But they're going to they're going to say to you, <clears throat> you know, let's come to an agreement because this is outside of my scope, but I want to make this easier on them. Can you figure out what your total cost is going to be for for cost and labor so that you get out of this what you want? And can you add an extra 10% on that? And that'll be a kickback. Now, they may not word it in that exact way. They may not use that exact number. They may not use those exact words. But there will be a conversation on agreement of, a, of some sort of a kickback because it's you help me, I help you. Scratch my back, I'll scratch your back. Is that fair? Is that fair for a property manager to say, hey, this is outside of my scope. So when these types of situations come along where we're doing things that are outside of the scope of my work, like remodeling, I want to make it easier on this customer. Can you and I come to an agreement 
as to a recognition of my referral for that work, right? Because you're, you're making extra money, whatever the case is. So that's my question to you uh, at the end of this video is what do you think about that policy? Because it does happen. It does happen for sure. All right, nieces and nephews, this has been Dave the Handyman at uh, Confessions of a Handyman. Thanks for stopping by. I'll see you on the next video.